Hi everyone, my name is Yasmina Burek and I'm a PhD candidate and a research associate at the University of Arkansas. Today I'll be talking about feeding strategies to mitigate cost and environmental footprint of pig production in the U.S. When I say feeding strategies, I mean I will be presenting a particular sets of diets which uh, satisfy certain criteria. Those diets are least cost, least carbon footprint, least water footprint, and least land use diets. So what was the motivation for this research? It is well established that livestock sector is one of the main drivers of the environmental impact in the United States and world. Those environmental impacts include carbon footprint, water footprint, and land use. According to the National Life Cycle Carbon Footprint Study for production of U.S. wine, 50% of total greenhouse gas emissions of pig production and consumption stem from pig feed ingredients. In the United States, the most common feed ingredients are soybean meal as a protein source and corn as an energy source. The National Resource Council has a publication, Nutrient Requirements of Swine, and it suggests there are 180 feed ingredients that we can feed a pig. We see an opportunity here to uh, use that list and develop diets that may be alternative to the existing uh, average U.S. corn, soybean meal based pig diet. And uh, we set up a certain criteria how our diet uh, need to look like. Traditionally, the farmer is um, interested in uh, obtaining pig diets and feed ingredients based on the least cost criteria. But we also think that uh, it is important to reduce the environmental impact of these feed ingredients. For instance, the water footprint, land use are also important resources for the farmer. If we reduce those, we also reduce uh, the cost of the water use and the uh, land use. As well as if we reduce the carbon footprint, uh, we improve the efficiency of big production and, and, uh, and reduce the cost. Our final goal is to find a diet that will be both cost effective and environmental sound, which would lead to, or diets, which would lead to a better and more sustainable pig production. So what needed to happen for us to be able to model such diets? First, we had to have a, a model, the life cycle assessment model of the pig production. This model also includes the life cycle assessment and environmental footprints of feed ingredients, of hundreds of feed ingredients, which we selected as the top 100 ingredients that are used in uh, US pig production. But the life cycle assessment model cannot answer all the questions. For instance, the life cycle assessment does not know what happens on the farm what kind of production practices, how the pig grows, what is the conversion ratio of per feed, what is the average gain of the pig. So we needed another model, it, and this model is called Pig Production Environmental Calculator. These two models enable us to analyze diets, but the procedure to analyze those diets is, okay, we have our average di diet, we plugged it into our pig production environmental calculator. We get the results and see like, okay, what can we do to change this? Let's alter it and go back and back, back and forth finding the best diet. But this is very non-effective modeling. And here we are in search of a particular set of diets, the diets that have a characteristic of least cost, least carbon footprint, least water footprint and least land use. So for that reason, we need another model. And that model is a feed formulation, least cost linear optimization model. 
we use that one and modified to also be able to model the least carbon footprint and water footprint and land use. So together with all these three models, we are now able to analyze our diet almost simultaneously. We have the model that will alter our uh, diet to our specific sets of criteria and then analyze it through the pig production calculator, get the results of how much actually of feed we uh, needed to grow a pig, and finally obtain through the model of the life cycle assessment the environmental uh, footprint of pig production. So we are not just analyzing the diet, the environmental impacts of diet itself. We are observing it in a system of the pig production. Of course, to model the least pig diet, we needed a certain uh, input data. Uh, we selected top 100 feed ingredients used in pig production in the United States. For each of that ingredient, we needed a database of nutrient characteristics, the database of car their carbon footprint, water footprint, and land use, and also the, the average US feed ingredient cost. The modeling parameters of the least mod model uh, accounts for nutrient constraints for all phases uh, of the pig production, starting from nursery, uh, grow, and sow. And also, we need to set up a maximum feed ingredient inclusion rate in the diet. It is now clear that this is a, a very data intensive modeling. We have three models. Each of the models have certain parameters. And uh, um, we can now um, understand, set a certain goal, and model our diet. And because of this extensive list of the parameters and that are fed into our models, the model is very sensitive. The minimum and maximum inclusion rates can vary. One author can say, I want third maximum 30% of the soybean meal, but it can be 35%. Also, the, in, in our analysis, we did fix some of the minerals, vitamins, and the amino acids so it matches the baseline diet. We mostly focus on energy and protein feeds. Also, uh, we know that all the feeds are not equally available. It depends on the feed markets in the United States. The costs also vary throughout the region. And also, what is the cost of corn today? It might not be tomorrow. The environmental footprints of our feed ingredients vary. If we produce um, our corn in a region that needs a lot of irrigation, the water footprint will be different, much different than the, in a region that uh, does not need to use the irrigation. So I will explain how this sensitivity affects our result. Here is the sensitivity towards the maximum inclusion rate. The upper chart shows the maximum inclusion rates for corn, wheat, sorghum, barley. And this uh, magnified part shows for wheat shorts, wheat mean, meat millings, rice bran. So the maximum inclusion rate for wheat millings is, uh, should be 20%. But in a diet, the exact diet in a particular diet is also 20%. That means that if, if we decrease this maximum inclusion rate, the diet profile will change because something will have to sub substitute for this with middlings that we lost. So uh, taking into the consideration all these assumptions and the, and the parameters, uh, here we have uh, an example of the average US pig feed uh, diets. And uh, the columns represent the phases of pig production. On the left side, we have a five growth phases, and then the, uh, after that, the nursery phase, and two sow, to station, and lactation phases. So we can see that the average US pig diet is composed of corn, soybean meal, and core DDG. Our least cost pig diets, according to our linear optimization model, is 
composed of wheat, soybean meal, corn DDG, and sorghum. Our least carbon footprint pig diets are composed of soybean meal, wheat middlings, soybeans, soybean hulls, and two types of molasses, beef tallow. Our least water footprint pig diet is composed of feed, field peas, canola meal, flaxseed meal, fish meal, barley, and alfalfa meal. And finally, our least land use pig diet is composed of corn DDG, rice bran, corn gluten feed, fish meal, beef tallow, and two types of the molasses. So now we have all our spectrum, a large spectrum of feed ingredients, and surprise, each of the least diet is different. Which, in other words, how can we interpret this? So for each criteria, there is a specific set of feed ingredients that will give the least cost, the least carbon footprint, and least water footprint, least land use. But we think that based on this re result, we can improve our environmental sustainability of the pig diets using more diversified protein and energy sources. Upon the analysis in the pig production environmental calculator where we get the exact amount of feed that was necessary to produce pig and also uh, other energy, water, and land requirements and feed them into the life cycle assessment model. We now analyze the final result, which is the total cost and environmental footprint for market pig live weight. And these are first our total diet profiles. So they are different, but there are particular ingredients that do repeat across the least, uh, least scenarios, at least diets. For instance, wheat, repeat, uh, wheat middlings, corn gluten feed, and corn and soybean meal. In terms of how much actual amount of feed we had to feed the, our animal on a kilogram per kilogram live weight, we achieved a couple of grams of reduction for least carbon footprint and least water footprint, but they are similar across different feeds. So that didn't change much. And how does then this diet profile of different uh, uh, pig diets affect the total life cycle assessment result? So in our columns, we have our average US pig diet. And uh, after that, each column represents our objective, least cost and carbon water footprint and least land use. For each of these diets, uh, we are able to calculate their respective other three parameters, which we call alternatives. And we can see that if we take the least carbon footprint pig diet, yes, we got the least uh, carbon footprint. However, other uh, elements, other parameters, cost and land use and water footprint increase. The same goes for least water footprint and least land use big, diet, big diets. So uh, there is a trade-off uh, for getting that an optimal diet according to these objectives. So how can we tell which of these alternative is the best uh, to replace the average U.S. big diet. For that, we use the multi-criteria analysis. So basically, we have our objectives and alternatives, and our ob objectives were compared one by one um, across these categories. And we use two models. Uh, one is the weighted product model, and the second one is ratio analysis. We see that we've seen that we got different results for two models. In one, least carbon footprint is the best alternative. In the second, the least water footprint is the best alternative. So what does that say? Well, we answer four important questions. We obtain the diets for the least cost, least carbon, least water footprint, least land use diet. But we cannot 
say for sure which of these is the best alternative to the average US pig diet. So the main recommendation uh, for the future research will be, yes, we think the diversification of feed ingredients will help reduce cost and environmental footprint. We also think that we need to expand this research and analyze different assumptions for which we do have the ability. So we will try to investigate the, uh, the, our ratios based on feed availability, pig production practices, different environmental footprints, maximum inclusion rates, feed costs, and maybe even expanding the criteria. Because if we are able to get the least cost and least carbon footprint, we might as well be able to get the least protein, at uh, least phosphorus or least ni nitrogen uh, big diets. This all um, can be then analyzed in multi-criteria analysis using the multi-criteria analysis, which hopefully will get us a better uh, conclusion about the big diets and about how can we, we move forward to have our pig diets more sustainable and thus the pig production more sustainable. So finally, in a, related to this research, we have two posters. The first poster is environmental footprint cost and nutrient database of the US animal feed ingredients, which uh, gives us the full list of the ingredients that were modeled in our least scenarios and their respective cost and um, the footprints. And the second one, we also performed the exercise to reduce the cost and environmental footprint of pig diets with the experimental optimal synthetic amino acid inclusion. And uh, these are our sponsors and acknowledgements. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm ready to receive questions. The final result is based on the animal performance, but the input result is based only on the nutrient characteristics. So we model nutrient characteristics, set, for instance, we can set uh, metabolizable energy, protein, uh, different minerals that need to satisfy and model the diet. Does that answer your question? <laughs> OK. But the final result did go to the big growth calculator, and we obtained the least cost based on the kilogram of white live weight. 